Before I proceed with the delivery of my privileged speech, Mr. Speaker, may I be allowed to make a short manifestation? Go ahead, uh, Congressman Bilaro. Mr. Speaker, I just want to make it to record that this representation from one of education party lists joins the clamor for general salary increase, which was earlier espoused by the discussion between the presiding officer and that of one act party list representative from ACT Parties. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Noted. Please proceed. Let me begin with my privileged speech by citing that our homes were often told by our parents that when we go out of the world, we always have to put our best foot forward. In the community of nations, this is already urban legend, that we claim that we have the English advantage as our comparative advantage in the global labor market. Now comes the report of Hopkins International Partners last week, debunking that fact, that in fact, what is the reality is that our university graduates have in fact fallen below that of global standards. This means, ladies and gentlemen, only one thing, that when we claim that we have the English advantage, in fact, we are not putting our best foot forward, but in reality, we are just pulling our legs. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, distinguished guests at the gallery, especially th those from the the Council of Management Educators and Practitioners of the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The report is also telling us that our supposed best foot, that of English proficiency, is suffering from arthritis. Consider this data, ladies and gentlemen. In the said two-year study, Filipino university graduates average only 630, a far cry from the possible score of 850 required by business process outsourcing companies the world over. The study also noted that it is lower than the competency requirement for taxi drivers in the United Arab Emirates and lower than that of the high school graduates of Thailand and Vietnam. I am sure that this... This is a report that our elders would regret. Many of those from older generations would claim, which is quite verifiable, that even in schools in the provinces, people speak better English in the olden days. In fact, many of you would agree with me that each one of us probably know a lot of older people who may have only finished high school and yet have a better command of English than many of our graduates of today. In view of this development, it is just fair to ask who or what are the culprits? Of course, the usual suspect is, of course, the agency tasked with taking care of the education for young people at the formative stage, the Department of Education. While it may not be fair to ascribe to it, the primal difficulty of getting our school children to school, given a milieu of poverty and all the real related problems it brings. The agency certainly has a pivotal role in making out the most of whatever budget it can get. Ladies and gentlemen, let me emphasize this. At the heart of the problem is the Department of Education's neglect, neglect of giving English the proper emphasis it deserves in the instruction of our school children. <coughs> Instead of allowing it to grow in conjunction with the teaching of Filipino, our national language, the resulting scenario was that the promotion of Filipino in our schools came at the expense of teaching English when the ideal but also realizable scenario
could be the mutual development of both English and Filipino as languages of instruction. Worse, the Department of Education also allowed the use of the vernacular, the regional dialects in the teaching of our school children. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this representation, together with other members of the House of Representatives, such as CHT Chair Ann Hofer, Congresswoman Malu Acosta Alva, Congresswoman Juliet Uy, and Congressman Peter Unabia, just came from a regional consultation on the fate of several extension centers of Bukidnon State University and the University of Science and Technology of the Philippines. During the consultations, one local government official related to this representation, DepEd's making instruction in the local dialect. When in fact, the students already know the dialect. Accordingly, there is simply no value added, value added to the vernacularization of such instruction as it deprives the students of less opportunity to practice in school setting, the global language of science, mathematics, and of course, commerce and in industry, which is English. Practice after all, ladies and gentlemen, is regularity of use, consistency through time, preparation for perfection. After all, there is no other road to better English than constant practice. From basic education, we also need to re-examine how higher education deals with the matter of the English proficiency of our college students. The Commission on Higher Education, CHED, certainly needs to re-examine its curricular offerings to arrest the worsening English proficiency of our college graduates. We may also need to re-examine the role of the media, especially institutional and commercial media, in this development. Perhaps it is about time that we obligate the institutional press and the mass media to help in the development of programs that would contain the proliferation of pidgin or hybrid English and the development of programs that will enhance the English proficiency of our youth. The telecommunications companies should also share a part of the responsibility in our quest to reassert our English advantage, if not supremacy in the global labor market. In this era of abbreviated text messages, our telecommunications companies may be compelled as a condition to the renewal of their franchises to make use of technology so that correct spelling of text messages may be promoted and that it would be easier for the youth of today to enhance their vocabulary. Indeed, arresting the trend of worsening English proficiency of our youth would require a multi-sectoral effort. On the part of the legislature, the 17th Congress, we also need to review the pertinent clause and in this regard, the initial point of inquiry should be the highest law of the land, which is the 1987 Constitution. On this point, let me point out that it may not be fair to blame the CHED or DepEd primarily for the worsening English proficiency of our students. This is so because even the Constitution, the very Constitution, is wishy-washy with respect to the promotion and development of the English language. Please allow me to cite Article 14, Section 6 of the 1987 Constitution, which provides that the national language of the Philippines is Filipino. Kindly no make no mistake of this. This representation is for all the retention and promotion of Filipino as our national language. It is and will always be the national language of our country the language of unity, and the language of national pride. What is problematic, ladies and gentlemen, is the subsequent constitutional provision, which is Article 14, Section 7, which provides, if I may quote, for purposes of communication and instruction, the official languages of the Philippines are Filipino, and until otherwise provided by law, English. Ladies and gentlemen, at the expense of sounding repetitious, please allow me to reiterate this point, that this representation 
holds that there should be no debate on Filipino as our national language. There should also be no debate on its being an official language of our country. The problem lies in the status of English, whether it could also be elevated into an official language of our country together with Filipino. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly take note of the nuance between a national language and an official <laughs> language. For this reason, this representation after this privileged speech will be filing a bill that will make English an official language of the Philippines, together with Filipino, so as to fill in the void left by the 1987 Constitution. Indeed, it is high time that we provide an enabling law that promote, that will promote and strengthen English, being the lingua franca of instruction, commerce, and industry in a globalized community. That way, the agencies tasked with the instruction of our school children, the Department of Education and the Commission on Higher Education in particular, will be guided accordingly in the formulation of policies and regulations that affect the education of our youth. In a previous speech before this August body, ladies and gentlemen, this representation cited that the Duterte administration has revolutionized Philippine education with the free college education law and the free Wi-Fi bill law. In relation to this, my dear colleagues, I would like again to make an appeal to you to support the bill that I will file on the promotion and strengthening of the English language as a major language of instruction in this country of commerce and industry. This will strengthen the comparative advantage of our human resources in the world market, as English is the current lingua franca in our globalized world. It would also complete the revolution in Philippine education that we started as strengthening com competencies in the lingua franca is already a step ahead in the world labor market. In the beginning of my speech, I likened strengthening the English proficiency of our youth to putting our best foot forward. That is so, as that would enable our youth of today and the generations to come to dance with the music as understanding the lingua franca would make them understand the language of the music and to act appropriately according to required cadence, rhythm, and harmony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at this juncture of our national history, wherein we have a choice. Whether we allow the proliferation of this condition of our English proficiency or to arrest it. My dear colleagues, let me appeal to your sense of reason and sensibility. Because I believe that strengthening the English competencies of our youth is the best gift we could give them at this time. That way, we could give them the gift of language, which is also the gift of development, empowerment, and survival. By analogy, I started by saying that we have to put our best for, put forward because that would enable us, today's generation and future generations, to dance with the music. This is true because that way, that would assure the youth of today and that of tomorrow that, will, that they will not become the wallflowers in whatever music tomorrow will hold that they will not become bed swarmers in games of tomorrow, but rather we can be confident they have a good chance of becoming not only survivors, but also opinion makers, if not rabble rousers. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no assurance in our participation in shaping tomorrow. 
but certainly we as a people can do our best in shaping what it could become. By strengthening the competencies in the English language of the youth and the youth of tomorrow, we can be assured that the future generations will not only dance with the music, but also survive in it, enjoy it, and wiggle it. Again, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon. Long live Philippine education. Long live the 17th Congress. Long live the Philippines. Well said, uh, Congressman Binaro. Enjoy, leader. Did For the information of everyone, what is the official language of communication of this chamber? Mr. Speaker, Kapampangan niya po. Not Bicolano? Cebuano. Cebuano. What, what is the official language of communication? It's English. It's English, Mr. Ch Mr. English. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Let's proceed. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the privileged speech of the Honorable Villaro to the Committee on Rules. So moved. 